one of the horrors of the response to everything that's happened over the last, since October 7th, has been really the, the, the silence, the silence from what you call the global feminist community. Uh, the fact that uh, on October 7th, uh, women were, were raped, humiliated, uh, raped and murdered, raped and taken hostage. Uh, uh, they were, they were uh, again, mutilated, uh, killed. Um, not a word. Not a word about this from the Me Too movement. Uh, the Me Too movement to believe that all you have to do is is, is, is believe a woman. You know, women don't lie about sexual violence. And yet, what you're hearing over and over again is people doubting the stories, people questioning the facts, the reality, the reality that's been documented by videos made by the perpetrators. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is not hard. People are questioning the facts. And then, well... Israel does bad stuff too. I get, I get uh, on Twitter, uh, I get these things, uh, newspaper articles about uh, Israeli soldiers raping uh, maybe a Palestinian or raping another Israeli soldier or a commander raping one of his underlings. And rape happens. It happens everywhere. The difference is that when that is discovered in the Israeli military, that soldier goes to jail, prosecuted like in any law-respecting country. The difference is not only the fact that here they were ordered to rape and mutilate, but they celebrated it. The commanders celebrated it with them. Nobody's put, been put to trial in the Gaza Strip for raping. Not a single person has. No rule of law. I mean, rape, this was rape as a mechanism of terror. Rape as a mechanism of war. I, I, I guess the Russians have done that in Ukraine as well. It was somewhat condemned in Russia, in, in Ukraine. Nothing. Silence. The UN, I think yesterday, the day before yesterday, came out with a, the women's thing at the UN. The, the Women's Rights Commission at the UN came out with a mealy mouth, weak response. And the rest of the Me Too, here's, here's Congresswoman Pramila Jaipal. Jayapal, I'm probably mispronouncing her name, but you can join the club. Asked about global silence of Hamas sexual violence against Israeli women. U.S. Congresswoman Jamia Jaiwal responded by discussing Israelis, Israeli actions in Gaza and says that outrage must be balanced. In an appearance at CNN, Jaipal is asked by anchor Dana Bash, about the lack of response to the growing evidence of such allegations. The progressive member of Congress says she has condemned what Hamas has done, but I think we have to remember that Israel must uh, comply with international humanitarian law. Morally, we cannot say that one war crime deserves another. Bash pushed back, saying her question was about Hamas rape and sexual assault, and you turned it back on Israel. And the congresswoman says, I think that rape is horrific. Sexual via assault is horrific. I think it happens, it happens, happens in war situations, really. However, I think we have to be balanced about bringing in the outrages against Palestinians. 15,000 Palestinians have been killed. I mean, this is beyond disgusting. Anybody supporting Me Too women's organizations would draw all of their support immediately. It is horrific and disgusting to compare what Israel is doing in the Gaza Strip as an act of self-defense to the uh, explicit, motivated, celebrated rape, murder, torture, mutilation, burning of civilians by Hamas. For a U.S. Congresswoman to talk like this? For women's rights organization to talk like this? But then again, nobody should be surprised. Because whereas on the Iran Book Show, we have covered the abuses of the Iranian regime uh, of women in Iran for a year now, for over a year, 
since the demonstrations happened, since, uh, you know, these women uh, started to take off the, uh, the uh, hijab and, 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 and several of them have been murdered as a consequence. Have you heard any of the feminists talk about this? Has there been any outcry from the United Nations, condemnations of the Iranian regime for what they're doing to their own women? No. Uh, uh, is the way women are treated in Saudi Arabia condemned? Is the way women are treated in much of the Muslim world condemned? Are honor killings of women in the Muslim world condemned by feminist organizations? No, because, because they're, they're oppressed. Not, not the women, no. The, the, the Muslim world, and, and it's multiculturalism. They have their culture, we have ours. Who are we to judge their culture? And when Israel does something, well, Israel's part of the West, so we have to judge them by the standard of our culture. When the Arabs do something, well, we can't judge them by our standard. We have to judge them by their standards. And their standards, raping women, I guess, I wonder how many Arabs would like this, is part of their culture. It is disgusting. It is despicable. The women's organization should be disbanded. I've talked to no end for over, well over 20 years about the need for the U.S. to stop funding the U.N. and to leave the U.N. Israel should leave the U.N. Every Western cult country with any sense of pride and any sense of confidence in its own beliefs, anybody who advocates for civilization, any civilization, should leave the United Nations immediately. They should stop funding the organization. They should move its headquarters to Riyadh or to Tehran or to, uh, or to Caracas. The idea that, that, that anybody with any kind of self-esteem, any kind of pride, any kind of belief in the value of, of, of civilization still belongs to the United Nations is a disgrace. And, and uh, you know, uh, it, it should be something that is embarrassing to anybody who advocates for participation. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about some other good news, huh?